Hey guys, hope you're well. So, we're going to be making wild apple wine. So, what makes apple wine apple wine? Instead of just a cider, it's not the percentage because you can get ciders that are pretty, pretty strong. It's the addition of grape, in our case, dried sultanas. Um, cheap, easy, and it's all pre-measured. It's pretty easy to do. You can use raisins or sultanas, or if you're feeling fancy, uh, you can use grape juice or the grape concentrate that's meant for home brewing, the white stuff. You can use red, but it gives a funny color. This stuff, really good stuff. That's what really changes a cider into a wine, the addition of grapes. So, wild apples. I happen to have around five kilos of wild apples. All being said, very slightly over. Um, you can use as little as around two kilos. It will give you sort of nice, refreshing, light and sparkly. But I want something that's a bit more deep and raw. And I happen to have picked too many. So we are going to be doing something slightly different with our apples. Usually I would use the hot process, you know, heating it up, killing off everything, and you know, it speeds up the process. But for a change, I'm gonna be doing the cold way of doing this. So we're actually gonna be using Camden tablets. Now we're using Camden tablets because there is wild yeast on here and bugs have crawled all over these apples which have imparted the mother of vinegar culture. And I know this because I've taken an apple, cut it up, added some water to it, just to see if I could do a wild ferment with these apples. And um, it did ferment, and it has formed a vinegar after. So to make our apple wine, uh, usually apple wine is made by pressing the apples and things like that, but most of us don't have a press, so you can just use the steeping method, and that's the method we're going to use, cold steeping. Um, so sodium metabisulfate, not my favorite thing in the world, but um, it won't affect fermentation, so I'm gonna be using one per gallon. Now, always read your destructions, for your chemicals you're adding, because, well, this is, it's got a big harmful sign on it, so just, just be warned. So enough talking, let's do this, oh yes. So we're gonna be steeping our apples. Now, we're gonna be leaving the apple pips in. Um, some people say there's a cyanide in there, and well, there is a trace amount of cyanide, but it's really hard to kill yourself with cyanide. It has to be super concentrated, and the body works through cyanide stupidly fast anyway with your metabolism. So unless you're about that, that, that big, maybe that big, um, it's not going to be a problem. In fact, it will add in a little bit of extra flavor. Mm, interesting. So don't worry about that. We're going to be leaving it in. And um, what we've got to do is take our apple and hack it up. Now, if you have a cheese grater, you can use that too. A bit of time, but you can. And we want to remove the stalks because, you know, they, they don't brew very nicely. They have a stalky taste. So I'm gonna go through and cut these up, and put them in my bucket, which has been sterilized, even though we're gonna be using Camden tablets, which are technically a sterilizer or can be used as a sterilizer. It's best to do that first. Um, it's just an extra layer of, don't have to worry. So uh, I'm gonna do these apples and uh, we'll be back. So all the apples have been prepared and cut up into relatively small chunks. Any ones that have mold on them or are a bit too squidgy have been cut out and left alone because you're just adding technically wild yeast and potentially moldy fungus bacteria into your brew and you don't want to do that. Um, bruised is okay, anything more than bruised, don't add. So we're gonna prepare our sultanas a lovely half a kilo of sultanas. Now you can just dump them in and leave them alone and they will swell up and you know that's cool but we want the maximum amount of nutrients in this. It's 
the mass. <laughs> so we want the maximum amount of nutrients from our cell partners. So what we're going to do, dump them in a separate clean, doesn't need to be sterilized, container. I'll eat that one. And now I'm going to add some hot water. The hot water just gets in there a bit quicker. And uh, I'm just going to go grab the stick blender. So now we have added basically boiling water to sultanas. Give it a smush like so. Because, well, sultanas contain a small amount of oil. Why they added in? don't know, but they do. And what we're doing is we're just quickly taking off the surface oil. Now I'm going to go rinse these out and uh, add some more water and blend it down. So what we're doing is we're basically removing the outer coating of oils and whatever. I mean, this water is looking um, lovely. So I'm going to rinse this off and then uh, we'll be right back. So now we've rinsed off the outside, we've got as much oils as we can get out of these sultanas. Um, a little bit of oil is okay, you don't have to do it, but I went to the trouble of picking these apples, so I want my wine to be as good as I can make it. So I've got my stick blender, and uh, I'm going to blend it at nearly 2 in the morning. Awesome. Good enough. Here we go. We've got uh, definitely mostly blended sultanas. It's going to unlock more nutrients and make it easier to extract the flavors. If you don't want to do this, you don't have to. <laughs> it is a bit more messy. You could just add more sultanas. So now we get to put this together. Wow. So we take our apples that we've pre-cut and our prepared sultana blended mush and add them together. Now there is roughly a litre of water that I blended with the sultanas, so uh, I'm going to top this up to basically the six litre mark. Um, I know that I always end up making more, but there is going to be a little bit of wastage when we come to filtering and putting in a demijohn, so a little bit more is better. Oh yeah. So now, another one by two, two, three, yeah, a bit more. So we've blended our sotanas, we have added the apples that have been cut, we've got the water in there and it's coming up to about there, but considering that half of this bucket was filled with just apples on its own, it's about to, about where it should be. So I have got my Camden tablets. Oh yes. Now I'm going to be adding one Camden tablet to kill off this yeast. It's slightly over a gallon, I know, but at the same time, should be plenty good enough. So if you have the tablets, you take two teaspoons, put it on the teaspoon and crush it up. And then go to town on it. And you want to try and make it as powdery as possible and remove as many of the lumps as possible. Because, well, the lumps take forever to dissolve. Powder. So I finished grinding it down and it is now a fine powder. Just going to move it about and give it another grind. Uh, it's one of the things that I always used to hate about um, oh, doing this when I didn't know what was going on. You really need it in a fine powder. The lumps, um, they, they just, yeah, it just doesn't work. So now, sprinkle it on. Oh yeah. Grab our spoon and then give this a mix around to mix in the sodium metabisulfate. Come and have it. Yeah. Actually, it smells good, apart from the um, intense burning I've got at my nostrils. And what that does is it's going to basically be active for the next 24 hours. So I think I've mixed this in as good as I'm going to do it. And it goes.
Now I'm going to stick the lid on. So because this is the cold process, um, we're actually going to have to do this and keep it in the bucket for the next three days. So uh, I'll see you in three days. So the three days of stirring is up. So just to specify it, that is three days of stirring, one day making, and today, the last day, which is the next day, is when we're going to be bottling up. So that is a total of five days that this has been steeping on the pulp. Each day I've been opening up and stirring it with a sterilized spoon uh, because Camden tablets, they only temporarily kill off everything. Uh, if there's any left in there, it just it comes back. So we don't want that to happen. That's why you don't add a Camden tablet into a wine that's going to be sweet and bottled. Um, it just stops the yeast for a bit. It'll come back. That's why I use a stabilizer. Anyway, so we've got all the equipment lined out looking lovely. My side has been sterilized, so is my equipment, so is my demijohn, in our case a 5 litre water container. That's because we're definitely going to get our 6 bottles. We like getting our 6 bottles. So I also happen to have this pan, which I'm going to be putting all the pulp into. It doesn't need to be sterile because we're not doing anything with the pulp, unless you really want to eat it. Maybe. So, let's do this. Oh, I'm looking forward to this. I do like apple wine. So, stick a funnel on, stick a sieve, because, well, we're brewing in like a demijohn, and the more pulp that is in there, the more it's going to puke. We don't want it to puke, or as little as possible. So, uh, it's just going to be a case. I'm probably going to need a spoon for this, of pouring in the liquid. This can take a minute. So I've gone through and I have strained basically all of those Sotana mushy bits out of our solution. It's still cloudy because there is still little particles in there, but it should stop most of the puking, as in all of the puking. And we're going to be adding pectolase to it. I will do that in a second. But I have taken a hydrometer reading just to see what the sugar content was to see if we need to adjust the sugar and uh, it's reading 1.020. So basically, we don't need to do anything to it. We just need to add in a kilo of sugar. Looking pretty cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add in all the stuff now, because I'm gonna have to shake it all up. So in goes our yeast nutrient, because we want a good fermentation. That's roughly a teaspoon. You will take, in it goes. and also a cheeky teaspoon of pectolase. Now I was asked, is it important? Can I not use it? You don't have to use it, but uh, it's a lot easier to use it. In goes our pectolase. Not only does it give you a clearer product, it also helps stop all the puking that comes out the top. And we don't like puking, uh, it just, it's wasting booze. So now I'm gonna add in my kilo of sugar. Once I open it, there we go, and just pour it all in. Oh, right. Now it's just a simple case of shaking it up. That is rather full. I expect some puking. We'll see what happens. This is going to take a minute. So after a lot of shaking, it is finally all mixed in together. That's the nutrient, the pectolase, and the sugar. Now it is very slightly over the five liter mark. I normally don't like to go anything over the five liter mark. Uh, it's just for extra safety and security. But uh, it's happened and I'm not gonna pour it out. Cause uh, well, I don't have to, but I want the wine. Now it may puke a little bit, so I'm gonna put it on a tray, but for the most part, we're almost done. I need to test it with a hydrometer. I have rings to my hydrometer since the last time I used it in here. What does it taste like? Ooh, tastes good. Tastes like apple and raisin, even though it's so tarno. So I'm putting my hydrometer in before I add my yeast. And it is saying it is 13%. 
which is 1.080, which is a very nice, should be a very nice little wine. So I'm using a different yeast for a change. Now it's something a little bit different, though it's along the same lines. This is the Gerving GV6. It is a light dessert wine yeast. Um, it says light dessert. It can go up to 16% which is pretty cool, so it's slightly higher than my usual universal wine yeast. But the thing that made me choose this is, well, it's coming into winter, so the temperatures are going to be a little bit lower. Even with my heating on, it's going to be slightly cooler in my house. And uh, this is a Sultanines um, yeast, which means basically it can ferment down at 5 degrees and carry on fermenting, even though a bit slower. So I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit in. We're done. Now, of course, I'm not going to be, it's not going to be five degrees in my house, but uh, I just like the little bit of extra security that it brings since I'm not using a heat mat. But apart from that, we're done. I just got to put this on a tray, out of the way, and, well, leave it to brew. So we'll be back in about four weeks' time to see how this turned out. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to check out some of the other ones, and, well, subscribe if you feel like it. Carry on homebrewing, guys. See you later. So I just want to take a second to thank my patrons. Uh, they're helping me grow the channel, upgrade my equipment, all of that fantastic stuff. And as a thank you to them and for future patrons, I also do four Patreon-only videos per month. So it's pretty handy if you want a little bit extra. Um, so there's some other links to videos down below. And of course, the Patreon and subscribe button. Don't forget to check those out. See ya.